In this InDesign tutorial, I'm going to show you what all the object effects do to an actual object here in InDesign. So, file and open. I'm going to go down to my Chapter 9, Folder 3, and I'm going to open up Applying Effects. So I've got this box and I pretty much have one photo. I want to fill every box with the same photo. So I'm going to select right here, Command D. And in folder three, I have one photo. We'll just fill it like that. The problem is I don't want to click this and Command D, this and Command D, this and Command D. So I'm just going to delete these other boxes for a second. And I'll just duplicate this one. Shift and Option. I'll drag a copy. Shift and Option. Drag a copy. Select all three. Now I hold Shift and Option. Drag more copies. Shift and Option. And I'll drag more. It's a lot quicker. Okay, like I've shown you before, drop shadows. You can select an object and you have a default drop shadow button right up here, click. But if that doesn't really do the trick for you, I can click it again to turn it off. Right next to that, you have FX, effects. So when I click that, I can come down to drop shadow and that takes me to the dialog box. So I can turn on the preview, I can click the up arrow for the distance right there. I can click the up arrow for the size, which is the softness of the drop shadow like that. And I can click OK. That works. If I click on this one, there's an effect called an inner shadow. So this is the shortcut to the effects. If you forget these tiny little buttons, you can always go to object and effects. It's the same exact list. And I'll go to an inner shadow right here. Keep the preview on. Don't really see much of an inner shadow. So what I'm going to do is set the distance right here. I'm going to crank that up. And you can start to see that inner shadow coming in from the corner. But if I want it to go on all the edges, I'm going to set my distance down to zero. Then I adjust the size right down here, hit the up arrow. I can just see a faint shadow. So I'm going to adjust the choke. When I drag that over, drag it a little more, drag it a little more. Now I can see an inset shadow right there, an inner shadow. Kind of a cool effect. I click and drag on this one. I can go to the FX for the outer glow. And by default, your outer glow is meant to have like a light source. It's meant to glow. So it starts with a bright color, but obviously white on a white sheet of paper, you're not going to see it. Bright colors like white work with screen mode. So I'm going to change that to multiply and change this color by clicking on it to, let's say, red. Okay, let's see what we get. Let's take the opacity and drag it up a little higher, around 90%. I want to drag the size by hitting the up arrow. And now you can see that glowing effect based on the red. There we go. I'm going to select this one. Instead of outer glow, it's going to be an inner glow. Click the effects, inner glow. Okay, again, it's got a light source, so we'll keep this because it's going to go inside on the photo. And I want to set the opacity up maybe to around 95 so we can really see this. And all I'm going to do is go from the edge. I'm going to highlight the size, hit the up arrow, and I can just start to see a faint glow. So again, I'm going to adjust the choke setting push it in and now I can really see that outer edge of that photo starting to glow right there and I'll click OK. There's my outer glow, soft kind of vignette. 
bevel and emboss is just like Photoshop. I can click the FX, bevel and emboss. And it usually works better on a flat object, not really on a photo like this, but we'll see what it does. Um, I'm gonna go with emboss. The technique will be chisel hard. And now I'm gonna set the size right up here. Hit the up arrow and you can start to see a beveled edge, a shadow along the bottom and right a highlight along the top and left. Um, let's see what that does. Let's see what emboss and inner bevel does. Okay, there we go. Because I didn't want it going outside of the picture. So there's an inner bevel. I can change the opacity of the highlight, make it a little brighter so we can really see that highlight. Okay, make the shadow a little brighter darker so we could really see that deep shadow right there and if I set the blending mode to let's say normal well I'm still toning down the white so it doesn't really work that well on a photo like this but I can try other ones like color dodge yeah, those don't really seem to be working too well hard light yeah we'll leave it <laughs> screen mode whatever Okay, but that's a bevel and emboss, and you have inner bevels, outer bevels, embossing. Not a big fan of that. Satin adds kind of a random layer of dark values. So I'll click here, go to satin, and let's just move this out of the way. I'm on preview. I'm going to set the opacity way, way up so we can see what's happening here. Go about 90, somewhere around there, 92. And let's set the size. Hit the up arrow. And that's kind of looking like an inner shadow to me. But let's set the distance up. And you could see when I keep cranking that, I'm getting a little bit of more of a clumpier dark here, a little bit more open space there. It's kind of an uneven inner shadow effect. I don't think I've ever had a use for that. It's kind of lame. Okay, the feathers are the cool ones. So I'm going to select this um, image, go to the FX, and do a basic feather. And what a basic feather does is it softens up the edges of your object. So I'm gonna set up the feather width to go a little higher, more of a softer feathered edge. I'm gonna add a little bit of a choke so it goes in even further like that. We'll do a more softer edge right there. And now when I click OK, I've got a nice soft feathered edge. See the inner glow, I can still kinda of see the hard edge of this object. Can't see that with a feather. Feather means blur or soften. So a directional feather, if I go to the FX, directional feather. And now this is based off of a, a gradient or direction. So feather widths. Let's link these for a second and hit the up arrow. Okay, that's pretty much coming in on all four sides like the basic feather. So I'm going to unlink those for a second. And let's see, shape is the leading edges, all edges. I don't really see anything going there. First edge, I don't really see anything going on there. Um, let's try the angle. Nope, not really doing much for me. Okay, there, if I click and drag, I can see it shaking around, but it's not really doing anything spectacular. I'm going to hit the top edge, and you can see how I can bring that in just on the top. I can set the bottom one to zero, the left side to zero, the right side. So I'm just pulling out just the top edge and it's coming in at an angle. That's why I have this angle setting right there. So you can see as I drag this around, it's kind of swinging that feather around there. Okay, but the best is a gradient feather. I love the use of the gradient feather. So I'm gonna click the FX 
go down to a gradient feather and it's based off of an actual gradient so what's happening here is the black gradient stop black is a solid color so that represents the solid part of the photo this gradient stop over here has a checkerboard pattern that's transparency so if I read this bar it starts solid and it starts to fade away fade away fade more fade more disappear okay so now what I can do is pull this in right here and I'll fade more of the photo pull this in and I'll have more of the solid photo okay I always pull it just inside the edge because you don't want your photo to fade just to the edge you want it to fade a little bit before it gets to the edge and now I can take this diamond do I want it a little more solid on the left or do I want it to fade a little more on the right and you could dial in just the right effect that you want to get photos to fade away into each other you also have a linear or a radial fade so it's kind of like a spotlight right there drag it out I get more of that spotlight, drag it in, I get a nice little vignette on the little fuel cap there, and I click OK. So those are your different, different effects here in Adobe InDesign. Again, when you select, you can go to Object Effects, you can go to the FX menu, and have fun with it, applying effects in InDesign.